And I must tell you, I, when I got here uh, a couple of years ago, I, I wrestled hard with finding the right terms to describe the condition of the Army. Because I was hearing it was broken, I was hearing it was hollow, and I was hearing that it's not ready. Yet when I traveled around the Army visiting soldiers and families and seeing uh, the men and women of the Army, they are anything but broken, hollow, or, or afraid. This is the most professional combat season force that I have been a part of in 39 years. But that said, we are stretched. We are deploying at a rate that is not sustainable uh, because we, we operate with an all-volunteer force. And this war is now the longest war that we have prosecuted with an all-volunteer force. So we're a bit an uncharted territory here as we continue to go forward. Uh, so I came up with the term that we're out of balance, that we're so weighed down by our current commitments that we can't do the things we know we need to do to sustain the all-volunteer force and to prepare ourselves to do other things other than the, the counterinsurgency missions that we're executing in Iraq and Afghanistan. So two and a half years ago, we, we put ourselves on a plan to bring ourselves back in balance by 2011. And we have made good progress on that plan. It was centered on four imperatives, the four things that, that we must do. First, we have to sustain our soldiers and families. They are the absolute core of this all-volunteer force. Second, we have to continue to prepare our soldiers for success in the current conflict. And I will tell you, we are doing uh, fairly well at that. We are sending them off well trained and well equipped for the challenges that they face. Uh, third, we have to reset them, reconstitute them effectively when they return from combat, because it's a pretty quick turn. Uh, we have been deploying our active force at a rate of one year out, one year back, plus or minus some months, for five years. And our Guard and Reserve at one year out, three years back, plus or minus. That's an unsustainable rate. And if, and if you'd asked me five years ago, could the Army sustain that tempo, I would have said no. So it's a great tribute, one, to the men and women of the Armed Forces, two, to their families, but three, uh, to the employers of our Guardsmen and Reservists uh, who uh, help and sustain our soldiers while they deploy. And I'm, my son has just been called up, and I've watched what his company did for him. To, to match the difference in the pay that he'll have while he's up there. And many, many companies across America do that for their, for their guardsmen and reservists. So we couldn't do that uh, without you. Uh, and then the last thing we have to do is, is to continue to transform for this uncertain future. And I'll just give you a quick status report on how we're doing on that. Um, we are doing very well on, on sustaining our soldiers and families. We instituted in 2000 seven, an Army Family Covenant. Because it was clear to my wife and I as we traveled around the Army that the families really bear a heavy burden. And we shouldn't forget that. It's hard on the soldiers, but I will tell you, in, in many ways it's harder on the families. Uh, the second thing is we've made great strides in caring for our wounded soldiers. And the medical care that they get remains uh, second to none. And we've made some pretty good progress on processing uh, them through uh, the Department of Defense and the Veterans Administration's disability system. More, more work to be done for sure, uh, but, but good progress in the last several years. And then the third thing I tell you is we have just instituted across the Army a program that we call Comprehensive Soldier Fitness. And it is a long-term uh, developmental program designed to give all our soldiers, families, and civilians the skills they need to be more resilient and to, able, and to be able to enable them to deal more successfully with these repeated combat deployments. And it's got four elements to it. The first is an online survey, where every soldier or family member can go online in, in the privacy of their, their own home and take this survey. And this survey was built for us by uh, leading scientists at the University of Pennsylvania and some of the best minds from across the country. And it will, it will give the soldier a strength rating in each of the five areas of fitness, physical, emotional, social, family, and spiritual. And then if, if they see that they're light in one area, then it will connect them uh, to self-help modules online where, where they can get uh, some additional assistance. Uh, 
That's the second element. Uh, the third element is that we have instituted already that in every level of Army leader development education, uh, there's a progressively enhanced module that, for resilience training. And that lastly, and I think probably the most interesting, uh, we are developing master resilience trainers. You know, for years we've had master fitness trainers that, that teach you how to do good push-ups. And that's been very successful for us. But starting next week, we will have 150 sergeants and family members at University of Pennsylvania going through a course uh, to make them resilience trainers. And our goal is to have uh, one, one uh, resilience trainer for about every thousand soldiers here uh, by this time next year. Uh, but we think that's very, very important for us to sustain this force over the long haul. Uh, the second element I'd, re element I'd report to you on is that uh, you'll recall back in 2007, we were told to in increase the size of the Army by about 74,000. 65,000 in the active force, the rest in the Guard and Reserve. Originally, that was supposed to be done in 2012. With Secretary Gates' help, we moved it forward to 2010. With the help of some of the great recruiters that are out here today, we finished that growth this year, th three years ahead of schedule, and not a moment too soon, if you don't mind my saying so. Uh, and then additionally, uh, this summer, Secretary Gates allowed us to temporarily continue to grow the Army by another 22,000. And, and the challenge we're having is, is that we have so many soldiers already deployed that we can't put in units. We have so many soldiers recovering from wounds that we can't put in units, and we have so many soldiers just, just nursing injuries from the repeated deployments that they're not available immediately for deployment. And so all of those things have helped us and put us in a position uh, where we are better ready to absorb uh, some increased uh, demand than we were two and a half years ago. And so that's a very positive step. Uh, the reason that's important is because the more soldiers you have, the more time that the soldiers can spend at home between deployments. And I have come to realize that the most important element of uh, getting ourselves back in balance is to increase the time the soldiers are at home between deployments. And one of the things we see as we look around the Army is the cumulative effects of repeated deployments. The second deployment is harder than the first, the third is harder than the second, the fourth is harder than the third. It's just the reality of it. And we have now scientific evidence that shows us that it takes between two to three years for the stress levels uh, of a combat deployment to return to normal garrison levels. As I said, we've been turning soldiers back in, in a year plus, and we have to expand that. And with the drawdown in Iraq, uh, if it, that proceeds on schedule, and even if there is a plus up in Afghanistan, we will still make progress toward our goal of one year out, two years back, for the active force and one year out, four years back for the Guard and Reserve by 11. And I think that that's usually important for us. So uh, bottom line, uh, we've made good progress over the last two and a half years. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet by any stretch of the imagination and we do still have a couple of tough years ahead of us. But you can be very, very proud of, this, of the magnificent service of the men and women, not only of the United States Army, but, but of all our armed forces. So break on the Army. Now let me talk to you just for a minute, uh, actually 10 minutes, uh, about the future. Be because, again, as Jan said, one of my responsibilities is to assure 10 years from now the country still has the, a, an army that can meet the challenges that it faces. So we do, we do spend a lot of time thinking uh, about the future and about what war would look like in the future. But we, we do that, we go into this with our eyes open. You know the old Yogi Berra saying? That predictions are hard, especially when you're talking about the future. <laughs> so, so it might sound like I've got a good view of the future. I know what I think it's going to be like. But whether it's going to be like that, I mean, what we try to do is not get it too wrong. That's our best hope. 